Hi and welcome back to Lincolnshire Fen Crafts. This is the second part of the uh, parsley hair needle felting tutorial. We've already completed the body in part one. So what we're going to focus on now is creating these legs and getting some really nice symmetry, really nice shape. Um, and these uh, creating these lovely feet at the end. And this is so much easier when we do it on this wooden stick, which is just a barbecue skewer. So we'll carry on from where we left off. If you have just happened upon this video tutorial, go to part one where you'll learn how to create the body. So going back to where we were, we were using the um, a cowded wool. You may be using the brown Shetland carded wool from the kit, or if not, just any carded wool you've got lying around at home. It doesn't really matter. Um, and this, if you are working from a template, this is the section that we're working on now, which is the, um, is the legs. But again, you don't need the template, you don't need the kit, just a nice length of carded wool in whatever colour you want to, to use really. So again, as I said before, this is quite thick. So what we did for the body was we, we split it straight down the middle like so, so that we didn't have a whole load of bulk to be working with so we could get that nice um, shape, that cone shape that we created there. Now with the legs we want them really flat and really sort of um, symmetrical and really quite slim. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it again. You don't have to do this if the card, it depends how thick the carded wool is but mine's quite thick so I am going to split it again. And again, we do the same as we did for the body. We, we get hold of our carded wool. And can you see how that, that's going to pull apart quite easily? So you need to hold it quite close to the stick, working from the top where the point is. And we're probably, we're going to make the legs shorter than the finished leg because we're going to roll them to smooth them out, which will lengthen it. So, um, but don't worry too much about that. We can, you can cut them if they're too long. That's absolutely fine as well. So don't worry about that. Let's just really focus on the shape. So again, keeping your wool nice and flat. You don't want it to twist. We're just going to start wrapping round near to the top of the stick. Just get that going. And we're going to keep it close to the stick and we're going to pull it nice and tightly and you see that it's quite quite tight but keep those fingers close because you don't want it to pull away if it does pull away it doesn't matter you can just um, you know just carry on with a new bit and then the other way you can do it as well is if you feel more comfortable is just wrapping it round you'll probably swap between the two so here we go can you see just really easily I'm not even using the felting needle yet this is a nice coarse wool so it's holding holding well. We'll get to about here and then we're just going to secure the wool around the stick. Working our needle again down the sides as we did when we created the body. It's just so it holds and as we did with the body we're going to leave one end, the top end, quite loose because that's where we're going to attach it to the body and that's really important because we want it to blend in quite seamlessly as you can see here so what we don't want is a big lump sticking out but again we'll come to that so continue to work down and as you can see we've got nice chunky feet here this is what we're aiming for as you can see that foot's bigger than the rest of the leg so when we bend that, we're going to have that really nice shape. So again, keep working down. Hold it again. And you can do this, once you've done this a couple of times, you'll find that you just work so quickly. This is a 38 standard needle, quite robust, good, because then it's less likely that you're going to break the needle if you if you do hit that stick. Foam pad with um, some, just a piece of felt 
on the top to protect the pad, make it last longer. So this is where I'm going to come to, to sort of my end here, because I know that that's going to stretch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to wrap quite a few times because I want to build that foot up. Can you see? So hold it tight, keep your thumb and your finger on the wool. And can you see how that ends starting to build up now? And keep it going. And then let's felt that in. And pay attention to the ends here as well. Go in straight at the ends and then diagonally around the sides at the top there because we just want to create that nice shape. And keep using the needle diagonally. As you go into the slimmer area of the leg, we just want to smooth that wall down around it. It just sort of needs to, to sort of seamlessly blend. Because remember, this is all about symmetry and uh, creating a really nice finish. And using a wooden stick like this, you could use a, um, a chopstick, I suppose, as well. But you'll have more air in, in the middle of the leg. So just make sure that you, you really sort of felt that well when you take it off the stick. You want to close up those holes that you've created, which is why I like using the, um, the barbecue skewers, because they're nice and slim. And can you see there that shape that's starting to form? And then we're going to go back up the leg because we want to wrap at least a couple of times. So now you can start to really speed up. You can just keep that wool flat. And you're working up slightly diagonally. To the top there. And just felt all the way down. Flip it over because you want to do both sides. And don't worry about any lumpy bumpy bits that will soon be um, smoothed out when we actually roll this in the palm of our hands. It's such a great way of, of quickly tidying and firming up um, your felting projects when it comes to sort of legs and anything sort of long. Heads, legs, bodies, you can you use your hands an awful lot we find it makes a big difference. And if you notice, I'm not felting this area at the end here because I want to keep that loose. So we're going to keep it tight, work back down again. You can now, you can see where this is, this is not moving down the stick. So you can just twizzle that down, keep it moving at a diagonal angle, but you don't want to be flat on because you're just going to create a lot of bulk. And then, so you see that's pulled off. That doesn't matter. I'm just going to show you why it doesn't matter because it's really easy to rectify. So I'm just going to pull that on. I just pulled a little bit too tightly on it. So just pull that round there. And then you can just move that around. You can see that wool's holding. So we're just going to felt what we have so far. And I'm just going to push this foot down. It's getting a little bit long. So go straight on with your needle and you're working down the sides of the stick and then around the edges. So you've got this nice soft round edge and work diagonally and then work into where the, the leg starts to slim off. But I'll show you some nice techniques for that. But working around this this stick, it just um, it makes life so much easier when you're you're doing these things. If you're not working with an armature, but you want really firm legs, and I I tend not to work with armatures a lot. I I will use armatures for the legs, and sometimes for the neck. But because I like a really firm felt, and I really sort of like to get hold of of my projects and work with them, I tend not to use armature for the bodies. Um, if you're doing fairies, then you'll need to do them for the arms. Um, I will use them on the sheep's legs, mostly legs, I would say, that I use them for. If you have seen the Highland Cow video tutorial, then we just use pipe cleaners for the legs in that. But that's, um, I think that's it for the Highland Cow. We just use the pipe cleaners on the legs. And again, um, if you look on my playlists, you'll be able to find them. So that's looking a bit, bit thick and chunky there now, but it doesn't matter we'll sort that out because we are going to lengthen this 
I'll just show you on here. As you can see, it's not, it's not long enough. But we're going to create a lot more length when we roll it. And then it will probably be too long, so I will just cut the end off. I'm not um, squeamish about doing that. When you when you're making something like this, it, it doesn't matter because we'll 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 pull all the the wool loose at the end anyway, so it won't matter. There we go. So I'm just now keep felting this. So be, what you want to do is get it as firm as possible before you pull it off the stick. And you see how different they look. That's exactly how this one looked before it came off the stick, and it was um, you know we we worked it some more. So here I am just really sort of working that wool because when I want when I take it off the stick I want it to be nice and firm and then we can felt it some more but the the firmer you get it before you take it off the stick just the easier it is and again avoiding this end. Okay. So here we go. We're just going to slide that off the stick and you see it's quite quite firm. So we're just going to continue and I'm just going to close up those that little hole that the um the stickers created you see how this this piece of felt is protecting your foam mat that foam mat's not taking any stick at all um, which means that you'll very rarely have to replace it which obviously is, a, is much better for the environment and this is a hundred percent wool felt you can get this in the shop in the web shop I'll, I'll pop the link down below for it okay so there we go so we're still a way off this but we're going to change that very quickly pop it in your hand keep the foot sticking out and don't um, and keep this end sort of out at the other side as well and we're just going to focus on the middle and really firmly get that going and you'll feel it warming and that can you see the difference already that heat and friction starts to lengthen the wool and firm it up and let's slim this out because it's a little bit chunkier than the other leg we want to get them as as near as damn it um the same where are we at still a little bit wide so i'm just going to i'm going to really put my finger there where that foot starts because I want to slim that area now can you see how that shape's changing we'll work that a little bit more it's a little bit longer than the other foot it's really good fun this though it's it's really easy you've just got to sort of keep working at it it's not particularly difficult remember keeping that end nice and loose we're probably going we're going to um we have to trim that we might have to trim that just a wee bit But that's almost there yep but as you can see our feet are slightly different so this this foot slightly longer than that one so what I'm going to do I'll just lay that there and I'm just going to work through from the end here because doing this will shorten the foot if you go diagonally you're going to be working those outside fibers but if you push right through you are going to be shortening that foot. And remember, we can always add a little bit more just to bulk it out. So then go diagonally here where it narrows, turn it and felt. Keep working it. They don't have to be a perfect match. That's just impossible. It's never going to happen. You know, this is not this is not intricate sewing, it's not knitting, this is sculptural craft. And because you're working with your hands and with, with, with a felting needle, you're never going to get that precision. So it can be quite strange if you've, if you've just done sewing or knitting or something similar before, where everything's quite precise and, and you worked at really sort of precise patterns, it's quite mathematical then this can be quite a change. So you have to sort of learn to, to relax into to needle felting. 
it's hard if you're a perfectionist, which I'm not. There we go. So we are almost there. I think we just need to fatten this foot up a little bit more. I may just add a little bit of wool around the end of it. And remember, with needle felting, one of the key things is you can always add more, but there's absolutely impossible to take any of that away now. So start smaller than you think you will need. And you actually always need less more wool than you actually than you think you need. You'll always use less. So I'm just going to that go in again there. Thin that out and then I'm just going to take a small piece of the wool and I'm just going to keep it near the end you see that and just wrap a little bit round just to make that foot a little bit bigger and quite often you'll end up doing this on the other foot as well because you've You've ended up with too much, but that's all right. So keep working that around the end. And you see how that's made that foot a little bit bigger now. Let's just really work in at the diagonal there. And you want all these sort of raggedy edges felting in and then we'll just smooth it finally before we finish I think I'm almost there with that not far off so I'm just going to gently this time smooth those edges and really push into where that foot starts that's better so one slightly thicker than the other so what I'll probably do is, um, when I finish the video, I'll probably just widen that area there a little bit, just so that they're matching. Um, but you and, and if you have um, a similar problem, you can do the same. So just keep working it until they're both similar size. It's not far off, but that is smaller. So what I'll do is I'll use a little bit of wool just to wrap around that so they match. And um, let's be honest, you can't have feet that are too big on a hair, so that's good anyway. And then when it comes to the back legs, what's the body? So the back legs here will attach to the side. If you see this one here, you've got this nice haunch here. So we're just gonna we're just gonna felt that on once we've created it and then build up the haunches. So it really doesn't matter um, with this one as long as that foot is nice and big and smooth like the other ones. So again, I'm just going to take a thin piece of carded wool and you can see the difference in length there. So this is going to be ooh, half, half the size when it's finished. So we just go around, work around the the stick or do it this way which is super fast I don't think it needs to be any more than that then come back down and keep going and keep going around this end bit here you see how we're building up that foot and then let's start felting that wool in so it's nice and secure because what you don't want to do is if you don't do this when when it comes off the stick it'll feel different thicknesses in different areas because you haven't felted it 
and then there's a chance of it unraveling or one it, one part will be thicker or thinner than the other. Keep that end loose. But you see how tightly you've felted that already. So you've taken a lot of the work away and you've taken all the hard work of shaping it away because the stick is just um, a sort of perfect tool. Um, let's have a look what we've we got here. Yeah, so I'm going to wrap that round there a couple more times, pull that off. More felting around where the foot's really wide because there's obviously there's a lot more wool and you haven't actually um, meshed that wool together yet. You may have wrapped it round but it all needs to tangle together and obviously the barbs on the needle are allowing that to happen. Isn't it great? Who knew? I've been using a, a barbecue stick, you know, a wooden skew for, for a few years now um, and I've just never got round to really working on a particular project that uses it as much as possible and um, I created this this is one of my personal projects from about two years ago and I looked at it again not so long ago I thought you know can't, we, surely we can do all of that around the, the 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 wooden stick which you could apart from the ears there we go so with these two, what you're aiming for here is just make sure when, when we've rolled it and it's finished that the, the ends are a similar shape and size. It doesn't matter if one's shorter than the other because we'll just reposition where we pop it on the hair. You're not going to see this bit, it's going to be covered. So pull that off and just feel it. And if it feels a bit soft in one particular area, then focus on that bit. And now I'm going to do the, the rolling again. And I'm going to put extra pressure where the foot starts. And these feet want to be at least as big as the front legs, if not bigger. I sort of sort of think think thumper. So let's have a look. So that's yeah, that's that's getting there nicely. There we go. So that's slightly longer, but we can trim that. I'm just going to add a little bit more wool on there. Just to make this a little bit bigger. Not too much, just pull that off. Don't be too precious, just get it on and get the felting needle on it. You see I'm going diagonally there again so that it blends nicely into the leg. We've got no sort of steps down, it's not what we want. If you do have that, then you can just lay a thin wisp of wool over that area and you can soon cover that up. Just don't over felt it on. Also as well, make sure you move your felting topper around and turn it over so you're not constantly working in one area. there I think just a quick roll with that one lost the shape a bit there at the uh, at the end of the foot so again just working diagonally soften those edges and needle felting is like anything else the more you do it the better you get nothing comes easy you know we didn't um, our athletes don't turn up at the racetrack with a gold medal around their necks. You know, they've had to put in the work to start with. 
I'm not saying this is going to take that amount of work, of course, but you get the meaning. And there we go. So that's looking, yep, yeah, happy with that. So just back to, to these two. So th we want this end loose and it's a little bit long. Just a wee bit. So I'm just going to take off the end there. And then what you can do as well as if you've ever felted it, which I have a little bit there and you'll do this all the time. You can just pull that apart. And then you've got a nice loose end to actually attach to the body and where it wants to sit on the body it's very quite close to the neck I don't know what's that about half an inch down from the neck and can you see because you've got that loose wool there it's going to blend in really nicely because what will happen is you will bend those feet I'll show you how to do that in a little while and then that will sit just under the neck so here, I'm just going to trim the end here, a little bit long, so just trim that end and then just pull that apart. And we're going to be putting some wool on top of this when we're finished anyway, so if the, end, well, if the cut ends don't catch particularly well in some areas, they, they will when you put the fresh wool on top. That's the trick. If you cut the wool and you find that it's not, because the ends have been cut, you've cut through the, the fibres because they're like scales, they interlock. So what you've done is you've cut through them so that sometimes they, they won't felt on quite as well as they should. And then all you do is put some fresh wool on the top. But this should be fine because we're going to be working through this area. So there we go. Two sets of legs and a body. We are ready for the next tutorial and we're going to create these lovely shaped ears and I'm going to give you some really excellent tips and tricks on uh, how to do that quickly and easily. So thanks for joining me and um, I will see you in part three of the tutorial.